Right, we will next move into the public hearing portion of our meeting. The first public hearing is to conduct the first public hearing on the 2021 proposed property tax increase as defined by Georgia law. And I just wanna share a revision to our agenda item is, <laughs> is that um, the dates have been changed for publication in our local paper and that um, the first, second, and third public hearings were advertised in the MDJ on Friday, July 2nd, 2021, Friday, July 9th, 2021, and will run again on Friday, July 16th, 2021. With that, Bill. Thank you, Chairwoman. Yeah. Um, and we just want to clarify, so we did, we were initially planning on July 5th, but because of the holiday, we had to shift a little early, so we went to July 2nd. So thank you for pointing that out. Certainly. I do have the proposed millage rate schedule here, so I'm gonna go through a brief presentation before we open the public hearing. So I just wanna make sure everybody is aware of the dates. We've already talked about when this uh, was advertised in the MDJ. Our first public hearing is today. We're gonna to have a second public hearing on July 20th on a special called meeting at 6.30. And our third and final public hearing will be on July 27th at the regularly scheduled board meeting. At that board meeting, we're also proposing to adopt the millage rate. Um, this schedule is in compliance with both Georgia state law and well as county code. So I just wanted to bring that out. This is, we are very strict on how we have to follow the schedule as we move forward. Okay, so here's the kind of the big show here. We're, we're proposing the exact same millage rate that we had in 2020. So, and again, this is the millage rate for 2021 that'll be voted on at the end of July. So we did have a significant digest, digest growth even despite the pandemic. So that's reflected in the graph below. But one of the things I wanted to point out to you is kind of, this is the more, a little bit more detailed version of the digest. So you can see what was adopted in 2020 and then what's being proposed for 2021. One of the biggest items that I wanna to call to your attention that we'll touch on a little bit more in a second is the exemption line at the bottom, second line from the bottom. So this increased or $884 million from 2020 to 2021. So this is your, the residents of Cobb County being able to take advantage of the homestead exemption and a few other exemptions to help keep their mortgage, their, sorry, their property taxes low. So with that, I wanted to share an example because this is one of the things that we always have to put in the paper. We talk about the legal notice that goes into the paper and we always focus on the general fund and this is what's legally re required to be presented. So the highlighted number that you'll see there is a 5.35% growth and that's what we're legally advertised. Even though the board is proposing to keep the millage rate exactly the same because the county will actually collect more than they did in the previous year, we legally have to advertise this as a tax increase. On the graph on, or the table on your right of this slide, I wanted to show you an example of a property. This is just a hypothetical property. So we're gonna say a fair market value of a primary residence of 350,000. Let's say they're reassessed and they, their property value, fair market value increased to 400,000. Okay, they've already had been in this home for a period of time, they've had a homestead exemption. So you're taxed on typically the 40% the assessed rate, but then you also get to take that homestead exemption on a primary residence. So the net taxable value of this property in, in 2020 was $130,000 times that millage rate that we're proposing today was roughly $1,099.80. And despite the reassessed value going to 400, because of the homestead exemption, that amount does not change. The only time that were to change is if that property were to turn over and then new exemption was filed by a new, a new homeowner at a higher value. Mm -hmm. So if you're in your home and despite the being reassessed, this does not change for you. The general funds mill the general fund property tax component does not change. So I just want to point that out as we move forward, because this is always a confusing part when we have to advertise this. And I get why we do that. But again, I wanted to clarify kind of how that, how that works. So the biggest driver of this change for us is on non-homesteaded properties. But if a homesteaded primary residence does not have an impact from this. Okay, so with that, I would ask the board to consider opening the public hearing. Thank you. Now we have our budget presentation, which will be provided by our finance manager, or finance director, excuse me. Thank you for letting me do all these at the same time. That makes <laughs> it so much, more, I don't know why uh, so much easier. Why you left. So. <laughs> okay, so just like the millage schedule, we have uh, similar meetings, but I want to point out a slight difference. 
Um, today will be a budget presentation. Um, we will not, we're not required to have a public hearing tonight, but we are required to have one prior to adoption. So that public hearing will be on July 20th at the special called BOC meeting. And again, we will be having the adoption on July 27th. And again, this schedule is in compliance with both Georgia state law and county code as we move forward. As a part of the budget presentation, we want to call out any new positions that are created because it creates board, the board has to provide the authority to create these positions and these positions are being included in the proposed budget. We're creating four full-time positions, three in elections, one in the county manager's office, and then two additional part-time positions. The total cost of all these positions is $397,000 to the general fund. Okay, and as we've already stated in the millage presentation, we're proposing a flat millage for 22, but not to be confused, we're voting on the 21 millage at the, on July 27th. This is a planning tool as we move for a budgetary, uh, the budget model into 2022. We're proposing a flat millage, but there will be an exception, even though the millage in total in this budget does include a millage shift between the debt service fund and the fire fund, because at the end of 2021, the debt service fund will have collected enough funds to pay off all the outstanding GO bonds that the county has in place. So legally, the county cannot collect any additional revenue into that fund. So that is something that will have to be brought back forward as we move into 22. And again, the board will vote on the 22 millage next July. So again, the millage rate will stay exactly the same from 20 to 21. There's a proposed change for 2022, but that will not be voted upon until next July. So just want to bring that to your attention. All right, so on the revenue side, we, do, we did receive a significant tax increase in FY21, and we're proposing an additional increase in 22. Now, one of the big things that you'll see as we move through this presentation is a significant increase in revenues, because if you remember when we adopted 21 for the first time since the recession, we adopted a 0% digest growth because of the pandemic. Took a very conservative approach, Although the digest did come in very very strong, we did have other revenues that were significantly impacted. So those some of those revenues were to offset the reductions. We're proposing we're leaving the water transfer from the water fund to the general fund at the current rate of 8%. And then on the expenditure side, some of the key highlights within the general fund, we are continuing to move forward with the next step for public safety, certifying sort of sworn officers in March. We're also addressing the first year of three years of compression adjustments for public safety at the same pay period, a 3% merit for employees not included in the public safety step and grade program on the same pay period. So with that being said, in the final budget documents that the board will be asked to approve on July 27th, we have those dates. So effective March 6, 2022 with a pay date of March 25th, 2022. All three of those, both the step, the compression, and the 3% merit will take effect on the same pay period as what's being proposed. Um, we also had uh, increases in pension and health care, which are common year over year. And then we're restoring some of our uh, capital that we removed from the budget in 2021 due to the pandemic. And the board was able to restore those via an agenda out of mid-year, but we're making those again part of the adoption process. All right, so we're gonna to touch on, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna back up because I, I left it off this slide, but we'll touch on it later, is the county is also setting up a contingency to address compression for non-public safety certified, or non-public safety positions as well in FY22. So that is in there, and I will touch on it when we get to the contingency slide, but I didn't wanna exclude it because it is very interwoven into this process. Okay. All right, as we move forward, here's some quick revenue updates. And you, the first top of the line, you'll see property taxes. We already touched on that. That's an 8% growth. But again, 5% of that is from FY21, what we actually experienced. Because again, in 2021, we adopted a 0%. And the additional three is what's being projected. But as you kind of look through those, you see most of these are negatives. So as we kind of pare down through most of these, you're only going to see property tax revenues and other taxes as positives, all other categories we're pairing back on. The other taxes are being driven from our title ed lorem fees that we collect, as well as our insurance premium taxes are continuing to remain strong. We are taking a conservative approach as we pair back on some of these, but you'll see in the other financing sources, as well as the, the interest that you're gonna see pairbacks on those specifically due to interest rates that we've received, 
and then uh, fines and forfeitures due to the court cases being closed during the pandemic, we saw a significant drop in those. We are seeing those begin to reopen, but we know there's a, some significant challenges there as we move forward. Uh, we hope to see those rebound, but for the most part, even the other categories are you know, slight reductions, but relatively flat, but an overall increase of 4.82%. Okay. All right. On the expenditure side, the biggest driver we're seeing is personnel. You're seeing a 3.65% increase. We've already listed a lot of those categories between the step and grade, the merit, the compression, and so on. Pension and healthcare also p play a big part of that. The biggest line that you'll see on here is the 377% increase in capital. Obviously, that's very skewed because we pulled almost all of the capital out of the budget in FY21. So to kind of give you an idea of what that looked like prior to the pandemic, we had $14 million of capital adopted in FY20. It is 10.2 million in FY22 being proposed. And the biggest change there is a reduction in vehicle replacement due to the fleet schedule, not necessarily a funding issue. It was more of a paring down to what we need to pay, replace vehicles as we move forward. Okay. The transfers out um, are remaining relatively consistent and then contingencies I'm gonna to touch on in the next slide here. Okay, so here's a compar comparison of the contingencies as we move forward, BOC contingencies the same, county manager contingency we're seeing and inc we're increasing there to help address some ongoing needs that happen throughout the year. Undesignated contingency, or sorry, designated contingencies are gonna be our shift differential and, or I'm sorry, the undesignated contingencies are change of venue, storm debris, and awards and recognition succession planning. So those are continue to move in there. And then we had a, a significant change in the personnel related contingencies, but the biggest change there is due to the compression contingency that we talked about for the non-certified and sworn officers or in the, not, the people not a part of the public safety step and grade. And then we are getting a new superior court judge starting in this January. So we have a contingency to address all the positions associated with the new judge and those will be funded, fully funded as we move forward into the next budget cycle. Okay. And then one of the big topics that we always address each and every year is how are the Braves bonds funded? Um, you can see the plan of adoption for 2021 is relatively the pretty much a mirror image for 2022. Um, we are seeing some positive changes in this. And as those changes continue to develop, um, those agenda items will be brought forward to if this funding needs to change. And by change, it would only improve and lessen the general fund's impact as we move forward. The biggest area that we're watching closely is the transfer from the hotel motel fund. Um, we are starting to see those room rates pick back up and the occupancy go up. Um, we're proposing no transfer at this time, just like we did for 2021. Um, but as those improve, it would be something that we'd be bring back for the board's consideration to help reduce the general funds impact. But again, that would come back only if the revenues were there to support it. Those revenues are currently being used to fund the debt service on the performing arts center bonds. And that's all we simply budget the bare minimum that we need to cover those, those requirements. Okay. So here's a summary of all the funds. And one of the things that we want to touch, I want to call out to your attention just as some some big ticket items that I think are worth mentioning is that if you scroll down to the fire fund, it's a 10.99% increase. Now, just like the general fund, we had to pair back on capital replacement in FY21. And that's really what you're seeing here is yes, you have, you know, the merit, the step and the, per the small increases for personnel, but this is the restoring a lot of the capital replacement that was taken out of the budget, just like we're doing within the general fund. And this is a self-sustaining fund, so any funds collected within this fund stay within this fund. And just as another reminder, the fire fund still receives over $4 million from the general fund because of the way we change, the state changed the TABT collections. So the general fund is still providing additional funding to the fire fund to keep them whole prior to that, that change at the state level. Okay. All right. And then... Um, a couple other things that I just want to point out. You see some, you know, significant reductions. Debt service. Again, this is the last year that we'll collect revenue within our 21 will be the last year that we collect revenue for the debt service fund, but we do have the debt service payments to make with the cash that we'll have on hand. So that is simply the debt service schedules winding down. And then one of the other significant reductions you'll see uh, dollar wise isn't there, but percentage wise is 7.33% for a law library. This is uh, just a pair back based on the court volumes because obviously the, the law library is supported by the court activity. Okay, so an overall for all of our governmental funds, you're looking at a 4.71% increase. Okay. 
and then we have our proprietary funds. Uh, apparently, the this time uh, during the pandemic is a great time to be in the golf course business. Everybody wants to be outside and socially distanced. Um, the Cobb County's facility has been a self-sustaining operation, and they have been able to generate significant revenues over the past year as people have been wanting to be outside and uh, socially distanced throughout the pandemic. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of an increase in there due to the revenue volume, not necessarily due to the expenditure volume, but this is going to be reinvested in the course and help to maintain the facilities that we have. Um, as just a one other highlight of this is the, 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 the course was actually able to generate some revenues and send some money back to the general fund in FY21 of $200,000. So that was positive. As this continues to generate revenue, those monies can be sent back to the general fund to help repay some of the initial investment within the course. Okay. And then we have our sustainability waste and beautification, formerly known as solid waste, is relatively flat. Transit is relatively flat. We're not proposing any new changes to the program. This is just simply based on uh, transit passenger fares and grant funding is what we see as we move forward. Um, our water system is relatively flat again as we move forward. All right. And these are the, the funds, our capital budgets, that probably have the most swings outside of the stadium capital maintenance because this is based on a schedule. Um, our capital project fund itself is going up just over 1%. This is funding a lot of our IT projects. These are projects that span over multiple years that are not currently, they're not funded by SPLOST. Things like PC replacement, the Uniform Court Case Management System, on base, mobile data terminals, and so on. Um, the next two are water-related capital project funds. These are the ones that are going to have the most swings. They're based on capital project schedules, but the water RE&I fund has roughly a $30 million swing here, and the reason being is we're spending down bond, bond proceeds that we issued to fund the lift station in South Cobb that was damaged several years ago. And again, just a reminder to the board is if that is ever, if we get to the point where we can receive insurance monies, to recover that, those monies will go back to the water fund to help replenish that, those costs and to continue to pay the, any debt service payments associated with the bonds. The water system development fees, um, the biggest change for this um, is 15%, but it's roughly $3 million is the count. The, this system has enough to um, use, a, use cash this year to pay some of our GFA loan obligations, so we're not adopting those debt service payments this year because we're going to be using cash that we have on hand, which is why you see a, a little bit of a change in this. Okay, so with that, that's the budget presentation. Um, also, just a reminder to the board, we'll have both the budget and millage presentations posted on the county's website. There are the uh, detailed versions of those also be posted on the county's website, and they're available in the room today, as well as a, a copy up in finance as well for anybody who would like to receive a copy. So any questions that I can answer for you today? Any questions? Commissioner Burrell. Yes. yes. Um, Thank you, Bill. Can we have a copy of a power, the PowerPoint Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. I will send everybody in the room a copy of the PowerPoint, and again, we'll post it on the website as well. But I'll okay. make sure all of you have it. As, uh, we'll send it out as soon as the meeting's over. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions? Commissioner Gamble? Hi, Bill. This is more um, addressing Mr. Bedgood's question. Sure. Because um, I remember last year there was discussion that we would be ending the Parks Bond Mill Yes. which is that 0 0.11, but I see it still included for this year. Yes. Can so, you explain why? <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's a great question. So it's the part that's confusing, I think, for a lot of people is the fact that we're doing the millage adoption for FY21, which ends in September. So we're doing that on July 27th, but the proposed budget starts October 1. So in the proposed FY22, there is no millage rate in the debt service fund. So what we're saying today is that if the board approves on July 27th the 0.13 mills that's currently in the debt service fund through September, which would be the final year of tax collections that we need for the bonds, we will have sufficient funds to pay off all the bonds. So you do see an adopted budget, but you don't have any revenues associated with that in the debt service fund because we have the funds that we need to do that. So that's what, and because all those funds are legally restricted to only go to bonds, once we get to that point, we cut it off and we say we cannot collect anymore. We have sufficient cash to take care of it. And when I say cash, we'll have revenue. So obviously the, we have this year's property tax collections that will feed into that cash number. But at the end of the day, those have to be legally restricted. So again, that's why it's a little bit confusing when we're ending a program like this, is that we're asking you on the same meeting to adopt 
the millage rate for FY21, again, that ends this September, and then adopt a budget that begins October 1 with a different millage rate, being a zero millage rate for the debt service fund because we cannot collect after this year. So what can the homeowners expect on their tax bill then for next year? Essentially that sure. that line will be gone or, or what can they expect to see? Yes. Or even their bill that they receive in so October. That's great. So the bill that they will receive for this year will include that 0.13 mills. Okay, so you'll receive that and then the county will be co begin collecting those as early as August and it usually spans into late December is usually our collection period. But that bill that you receive this late summer will be that 0.13 mills within the debt service fund. The bill you receive next summer, again, assuming we don't, you know, the voters don't approve another GO bond, which I, that's not even, yeah, we're not gonna go there, but we're just saying, you know, assuming that that doesn't take place and there's no plan in place to, to do a GO bond, obviously. Um, but that would be a zero line. So there would be nothing on the debt service. So for those, that live either in the city limits or in the unincorporated cop, that line will be zero next year. Okay. Thank you for that question, Commissioner. Thank you for clarifying, Bill. Are there any additional questions? Good. <laughs> Commissioner Bowman. Yeah, that, that's very confusing it because um, we're adopting the 21 millage which is the 0.13 mills for the parks bond is in that. Mm -hmm. But when we adopt the budget uh, and the millage for 2022 in July of 2022, it will, it will be paid off. Correct. So there has been talk of doing away with it totally, um, lowering the uh, millage by the 0.13 or transferring it to the fire fund to pay them back for when we borrowed from them in the past. So um, where where does that 0.13 go between <laughs> the end of September this year and July next year? Okay, so any property tax revenue that we collect using the 0.13 for this year will go into the debt service fund. So let's say, you know, they're, um, and we always have some residual receivables for property taxes, but for the most part, at the end of the day, the bill that goes out this year will go to the debt service fund. Until the board votes next July, that is, it doesn't, there's no revenue coming in. So once you vote on it this July, it's only revenue that's gonna cope through the fall that will go into the debt service fund. Until you vote next July, there is no additional revenue collected on a current year property tax bill because there are no bills. At the end of the day, you're going to have the next bill will be next, you know, summer to fall what that will come out. And that will be when you vote on July to determine what that rate is on that next bill. But as you said, you know, that would be that line will be zero. OK. OK. Now, this discussion is helpful. You know, there were two different times where we used to approve the millage and the budget. Now we've brought the millage earlier, which I think is lending itself to this period of time where we have to address that collection. Yeah, and, and, and I think the initial thought was is that we always base next year's budget on the current year millage, mm -hmm. and that has always been the case. And the only reason that it's not the case is you, by, by law, we legally cannot collect any additional debt service funds after this year because we have met that mark. So this is probably your, your unique exception. Mm -hmm. So I did want to make sure that uh, these are all great questions because this is a point that's probably not going to come up again in a very long period of time. Okay. Thank you. And, and again, thank you, commissioners, for your questions. I think that clarification was needed. Sure. Okay. Thank you.